Uh, last time he just came directly from work and he just came on here and, and he, we're... that man had a lot on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he was on one for sure. He said, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go straight on there and talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say something he said, off the record. <laughs> You know, I think some people are more concerned about what they, they might not go on podcasts these days because, you know, they might, something might get twisted from what they say. Like celebrities, I feel like celebrities don't go on as many yeah. podcasts, you know, and they've already made a name for themselves. They might, you know, because something might get misconstrued and then they get canceled. And I feel like I'd be scared, you know, like if this thing blows up or something like that, you ever say, you, you ever <laughs> say something like that? a plethora wrong? of videos to, yeah. to pick and choose from. <laughs> They'll find something on you. But I think it's also beneficial, though. If you're not known, I think and any type of um, uh, attraction or attention is good. Mm -hmm. Because even for this podcast, it's like, you guys suck. Like, <laughs> then, like that's the type of comments we get. Or like, let's make a podcast in, in like quotation, in quotation marks. marks. This is what he was telling me when, yeah. but when we met. Yeah. But I do get the part where it's like artists or people just don't come on podcasts as much yeah because a lot of things get misconstrued and like there's no context to it yeah they can just you know take some random soundbite you know or clip and they'll be like oh he's calling out exactly such like and such. andrew trait got famous off that yeah so. <laughs> literally yeah they just pick and choose those those clips how long are his interviews his interviews go on for like three, four hours, oh, dude. I've, I've never, I've only seen the little YouTube short clips by his like fandom. You've days. never looked him up. I mean, I've I looked him up, but I've never seen like the actual like the actual interviews, like the three hour long interviews. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen like his people or his his groupies like post on TikTok. Like, <laughs> yeah, the thirty second clips, you know that. Dude, it's like him saying something army. crazy. Exactly. It's like a whole little army of people like just reposting his shit. It's like an affiliate marketing. Did you ever look into that? I saw I saw that like on Insta, uh, TikTok that he has like the people that do the Hustlers University, like his program. Part of the program is they have to post these clips. Really? Yeah, like that's part of the Hustlers like thing, you know. That's you smart. Heard? Yeah, so that's oh, why I didn't know that. it's him generating buzz about himself with not even having to post it himself. Damn, so. that's dope. <laughs> he spends no money on it too though. It's like free marketing. Exactly. They People pay they, they pay to do yeah. it <laughs> because he offers these courses, you know. Dude, that's crazy. Um, but who do you follow? Like, do you follow like any certain artist or any certain podcast? Um, actually, I'm not a big podcast guy. I'll be honest. I, I, really? I follow like artists like Drake and stuff like that. Like their social media, you know, mm -hmm. they live very exciting lives. But podcasts, I, I I like on like TikTok <laughs> if there's like certain ones. Like there's a conspiracy theorist one. It's like two. Asian guys, like kid, uh, younger guys, and they always have like some. You like that type of content? It's just something I see on my feed. So no, I mean, honestly, just, I feel you because it's something I, interesting. Yeah, like so, something that's interesting. So I, I wouldn't say I'm like married to like certain podcasters, but like if there's podcasts like on my TikTok or Instagram, like Reels, and I'll see them and I'll be like, oh, I, I like what they're talking about. You know, if they they talk about something cool. You know. Yeah, you into conspiracies? Uh, a little bit. You know, sometimes. You draws your attention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, you know, it I'm used to draw to my attention here. on YouTube. Yeah, but you got something? You got you got you got a certain one? <laughs> um, nah, they're all old now. Back in some of them do. Yeah, there used to be. I forgot what the guy's name was called on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I forget his name. I feel like a lot of them have been reviewed all over and over and over again to where like it's like I guess just like boring to like hear them. Yeah, I mean, like I I would say an example Area Fifty One. You know, I'm always like, uh, oh, yeah. is it real? Is it real? And then, like, you know, I've been wanting to know for, like, 15, like, most of my life. And, like, there's still no confirmation. But I see, like, an occasional clip surface about this extraterrestrial. And I'll be like, I just want to know, you know? It's like, I've yeah, been dying yeah. to know. And it's like, still don't know. It almost seems made up sometimes. Ooh, like, is it even real? And then with AI, I feel like a lot of things oh. are just going to get, like, misconstrued. <laughs> and you could just make up any video, any picture. It really doesn't matter yeah. anymore so i mean that's why like a lot of those podcasts are like even our podcast we're still trying to find like our, our way mm -hmm. but for us it's like a lot funner just to talk like to like different individuals from a variety yeah. of backgrounds yeah, no, yeah, for, no, sure. for sure yeah. you guys don't, you guys don't <laughs> miss it like for, you for, guys, exam uh, go ahead, go for ahead. example you what do you do uh, I make music for the most part yeah, you make music music, music trying to get into the entrepreneur life but just making music Creating, I'm trying to make that lifestyle for myself, you know, make it full time. Okay. What kind of music do you do? Uh, I would say specifically pop rap. 
pop rap. So like okay. you guys had talked about, like you know, I definitely didn't want to have like a niche. You know, I feel like I can definitely like generate a lot of styles. Mm-hmm. And I think with pop rap, my main thing is I like to sing on the chorus and like rap the verses. Okay. So I give you like kind of like a Drake vibe, you know, that that good mix, that good combination, you know, where if someone can have a melody for the chorus and then like some bars, you know, for the verses. So I think yeah, yeah, that's just really sure. important to me to try to like differentiate myself because we talked about like niches before mm-hmm. we went on here. And it's like you definitely like if you don't appeal to like one small select like, group, then you you don't you can't make a fan base for yourself. And I feel like I definitely have more of an appeal than just wanting to appeal just to certain select people. I want to have a broader appeal. So that's yeah, why can listen pop to rap, I think, is good. for. What know. has helped you like continue? Like, I mean, I bet sometimes it just gets hard to like continue to do it or chase it. Yeah, I mean, um, I uh, actually celebrated 10 years uh, this month. I'm okay. uh, just making original music. So I was like uh, in high school. Dang, congratulations. Out, yeah. SoundCloud, you know, using like a microphone, like a $20 mic, you know, recording. Yeah. Putting it on, uh, uploading it to SoundCloud. And uh, I think I'll, I'll tell the story because I told it on my Instagram uh, for the 10 years. I hadn't really told that many people. I'm just starting to tell it now. I had a phone call six months into rapping, still in high school. I had a phone call from a record label. Mm-hmm. It was like Rostrum Records that used to be with Mac Miller. Oh, and they okay. said that they liked my music and that, you know, they wanted to get more of it. And I was like, oh, damn. It's an opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah. And then while, also while I was on the call, I ended up hearing like laughter in the background. And then like people saying like, tell him blah, blah, blah. And I recognized it was people from my high school. Like I, like I instantly like the, the, the gear switch. I was like, oh, these are people from my high school. And like I got <gasps> pranked or whatever. So I think that kind of like drove me to like, you know, my first few years of like wanting to prove like people wrong. Because it's like, you know, whenever you put yourself out there and whatever medium you choose, you're definitely going to get people to be like, you know, this sucks. You're crap. You know, a lot. They don't see the vision yet. They don't see the vision yet. Because, I mean, you definitely are not, you know, where you need to be. But, I mean, it's like the fact that you put yourself out there and you definitely get can get chopped down, you know? Who was those fuckers? Huh? <laughs> I said, who were those fuckers? Oh, uh, yeah, those people know who they are. Those people know who they are. Like, right? they just were hating on you? And it like... was just, yeah, I think they just, because I, I was the only kid, like, in my school, you know, putting out music, you know, it was like, they, they saw an opportunity to, like, you know, get at me or, like, make fun of me, so. And I feel yeah. like when you put content out, you have to be ready for that kind of stuff, though. Yep, that's exactly. But th- that's the only way you're gonna... And I think... I think it's better. I think it's easier for me now because I'm I'm ten years like I'm I'm 27 now. So I was doing it since I was 17. I think it's a lot easier when you're younger because I feel like when you get older, you get a little more self conscious. So if I was maybe in my 20s and I was thinking about putting music, you know, I would feel a different type of way because you know when you're in your 20s, you're like, oh, you know, you feel like you have to be a certain standard because you don't want to start. You don't want to start from ground zero because you feel like you know you should be here at a certain point. And I would think like, it gets easier. I mean, if if the skill, I'm I'm talking like purely like skill set, like with whatever you do. Okay. So like if you're just starting at 22, like start making music, start writing lyrics. It might not be good to start off with, but you, it might take you maybe one or two years to get good. You know, it took me like three, four years to really get good. Like definitely by my third year, I was starting to make like really good like songs that I still perform to this day. So I think that's why you definitely like. Have to start the foundation, even if you're like older into your 20s or 30s or whatever. Like, you still have to have that foundation. You're still going to have maybe some cringe moments. Mm-hmm. You just can't be afraid <laughs> to post it. Because I, I posted like a 10 year reunion video and I have some footage of me like rapping in class. And like, you know, definitely like my flow wasn't good. Definitely <laughs> cringe worthy. But I look back and I was like, well, damn, at least I started at that age, like understanding more about it, like wanting to work on it. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's like what the. How, how, how it can lead, you know, you see yourself, you know, all that way, all that time ago. But it's like, if I didn't even start that time ago and like keep pushing and pushing. You'd probably still be at that same place that you were. Yeah. Or I would have given up already. So. But has it become any easier like to get on stage then? Like, cause I bet all those things still like in high school that happen, like on people kind of like booing you or people not liking it or people just, yeah. I feel like when people boo though. It's kind of like they have something wrong with them. So, like, like, <laughs> I don't know. They, yeah, like, I mean, like I think people told me that because I, I used to, you know, get not not affected, but I would tell my friends, I'd be like, man, I'm getting a lot of, you know, hate comments. And then, you know, sometimes they would maybe they cheer me up. They say hey, that's a reflection on, on themselves. You know, maybe they have things going on in their lives and they want to, you know, instead of push love or positivity, you know, they go the, push they go hate. the different. Yeah. And then, so I'm just like, yeah, you know, I, I think with 
checking on TikToks and like people like, yo, what, what the fuck is this? I still get comments <laughs> on TikTok, like, what the fuck is this? I know like they're going to give me a negative comment and they're going to go about their day and like maybe post mm -hmm. like 10 more negative comments mm -hmm. on like 10 other TikToks or yeah. something like that. So I think it's like, I can't let it, you know, affect me anymore because I feel like I'm definitely solidified in like how I make music and like my craft that like, I just got to keep making songs. So I'll have friends that may not like certain songs of mine and they love other songs and it's like, you know, I can't keep trying to like be my be, yeah, yeah. be myself every time because I'll be like, oh, okay, you don't like this song? Let me get, I love getting feedback. Like, let me get your feedback and then like, I'll go make another song. Maybe they'll like it, you know, maybe they won't. But I love getting feedback. Just people that can give me like, you know, constructive feedback. They're like, well, I didn't like, you know, I don't like people shitting on me, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, I like them. I like them being real. They're like, hey, I didn't like this, but like, you know, like next time, like, you know, th this is what I didn't like about the song. Instead yeah. of, you know, I've had, I've had like people that were my friends and they like just shit it on me. I'm like, ah, you know, it's not really good for. <laughs> yeah. You didn't say anything good about it. Constructive. Kinda, yeah, 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 yeah. Constructive. So, but, mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Like, but I feel like sometimes too, though, there's just like trolls online, like with yeah. like, like that's what they just spend them, their time doing. You know, Literally. Also like controversy, you know, causes more exactly. of a, a, a reaction or, you know, and I think that's why it's like, uh, if I see a negative comment, like I'll either try to troll them back or I don't reply. So, you know, it depends on what mood I am. You know, if I, if I want to be a little petty, then I'll troll them back, but I won't like act like I'm frustrated. Like, oh no, fuck you, man. Like, you know, I do that. You know, it's just like. I just try to get them back or I don't respond to it all. Because it I, gets even worse, right? Yeah, because it's, it's at the end of the day, it's not going to make you or the person look good, you know, if you're like going off on a hater, like in your own comment section, you know, it's just, <laughs> it might be funny, good entertainment, but it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it puts you in a good light, you know, it's just like, so I always like to troll back, you know, say something funny, like uh, someone, let's see. So I performed at the, I was at MTV uh, on Friday. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I told you. I told you he performed at MTV. MTV, <laughs> yes. And uh, it was like before they went on air, like they had like a show where they interview a guest. It was a girl from Kicking It, Olivia Holt. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, uh, dude, uh, from Kicking It, I've seen Kickin that it. show. Yeah, Disney yeah. XD. Yeah. It yeah. seems very familiar. So yeah. before they go on live, they had like you know they have people go on and perform on the stage like for like well, they gave me one minute. So I went all the way to New York for one minute, but it was one minute. Oh, that, hey, it's something. And wait, wait, but how'd, that, how'd you work that out? Or how'd you get to that point? I had a friend uh, from college. He was friends with a girl from high school who was an intern for the show. I'm and she it. posts on her story, like, if you want to be a part of the audience or if you want to perform, DM me. And this was three months ago. And she told me the, the lay of the lamb was they have to listen to your music. If they like it, then you may get the opportunity. So each week I was hitting her up. Um, and like, Hey, can I come to New York on Friday? Can I come to New York on Friday? I had ways to get there to New York. So I was just like every Friday, like I had some time in my schedule. I was like, can I come to New York? Some weeks she was like, Oh yeah, we're going to be good. And then like, she would just pull out like, you know, last minute. Cause she's like, Oh, the act is bringing an entourage or something like, uh, there's going to be a live performance from the actual special guests. So it's like, you can't, you know, they can't have anyone else perform. So every every week for almost like 10 to 12 weeks, I just kept hitting her up at the beginning of the week. Like, Hey, can we make this work? Like, can something happen? I went, I went out of town for one week that didn't happen, but I just kept like being persistent until like Wednesday, last Wednesday, she gave me the go ahead, like, Hey, we can get you on. So on Friday I flew to New York, got to do one minute, performed my song 5am. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah. I got, I did an acapella he was version it. of it. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking it before. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> we've been through it all. 5am is called. Uh, I ended up posting a TikTok. I might get back to post a TikTok about it. And someone was like, bro, this isn't real. And I was like, and I just trolled him back. I was like, oh, I just CGI the whole thing. So it's just like, uh, you know, just trying to like, like we talked about like that, not, not trying to get fight fire with fire, you know, just like, you know, I think it's, you know, better for me, you know, just like either trolling or just like not ignoring or ignoring it altogether. How, how did it feel after like a whole three months of like trying to like do that? And you said I, you even went on the trip, right? Once and you didn't get anything? No, no, no. So there was one, there was one week. Where well, you she, didn't do it. she told me on Wednesday, she was like, it's a go. And then Thursday at like 7 p.m., she was like, actually, like, you know, we won't be able to do it this week. And I think that's kind of how like the music industry can be, can be kind of like hit or miss. Like, you know, things can be pulled, opportunities can be pulled away just like that. So I was like, I think at that point, though, it had been, been like six or seven weeks in. And I'm like, why am I still, you know. So what do you do then? Do you take every chance you get or how do you measure that? <laughs> I just kept, I, I, I feel like I had the time on Friday available. So I was like, you know, I'm looking for like a full-time job right now. So 
felt like the time on Friday I had available right now. So I just was like, well, let me just keep hitting her up. And then she would keep replying. So I was like, okay, there seems like there's still some sort of connection. And then it just all worked out, you know, like the 10th, 11th, 12th weekend that she actually gave me the the, the green light on Wednesday. And yeah. so, you know, I was able to fly standby on Friday and go up to New York and just like, I was literally just had a backpack and I was like, I'm just here for, you know, business, you know, I'm here, yes, for, here, to, here to perform. So Dude, it was crazy. cool. And it was, it was a TV, you know, chance to not be on TV, but perform in front of a lot, the audience that was going to be uh, aired and just like, you know, get some more exposure and like, you know, have that social proof that's, which is really big nowadays of like, oh, look, performed at MTV Studios in Times Square, New York, which yes, sir. is, you know, not, every, not everyone from our, not everyone in, you know, from Charlotte, you know, North Carolina can get that opportunity. So, you know, I definitely had to, you know, want to take advantage of it. How was the whole experience though? Like, like the crowd's reaction and all, like, were you nervous at all? Oh yeah, I was definitely nervous because <laughs> I think, I think when you're singing acapella, that and I, I see like I'm a, I'm a pop I do pop rap so I'm, I'm I started out as a rapper okay. and I started to get into the melodic like singing as well so I wanted to do a song like 5 a.m. which is a very melodic like singing song where like it I just wanted my with I want beat. yeah I wanted my vocals to really like you know hit so I didn't want to like you know sound uh, like tone deaf so I, I was that was what I was nervous about just making sure you know. But they were like, you get one minute. So I wanted to have an intro where I was like, hey, like, how are you guys doing? You know, I wanted to get the crowd involved a little bit. But he, I was like, damn, he's going to give me one minute. He might just yank the, the mic away from me after that one minute. So I was just like, hey, how's everyone? Like, I try to do as quick. I'm always big when I perform, like, uh, crowd participation. So I was just like, hey, MTV, how are we doing today? And I just heard, like, yay. And then I was like, all right, my name's Princeton. I'm about to do some acapella. Did my acapella, and then after I performed, I had like another like 10 seconds. I was just like, you can follow me on Instagram. I found out about this opportunity, like, all right, like, found out I got the call earlier this week that I could be here, booked my flight, like, didn't look back. You know, I just kind of like, you know, yeah. I just tell the story of like, you know, I'm not from here, you know, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm, but I'm here in Times Square, like, you know, presenting my original music to a crowd of people that don't know me. <laughs> And I think that's like, you know, I think that's something accomplishment itself, even if, you know, other people might not think so. I think that's, you know, I, I can sit the rest not, at night. Well, like I wouldn't did that, you know, I traveled for or three months, talked to this person and then traveled to New York and spent one minute of my time to perform a song, <laughs> my own song. And so, yeah, no. Was, do they broadcast all the people that go there? Like or like, how do they do it? Like afterwards? So with the, the so my performance was not aired. Okay. So it was just like, I just got to perform in front of the audience. You know, people got to take videos of me like performing on the stage. But uh, the show airs on like one of the MTV channels. It's called MTV Fresh Out. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, they have the special guest, which was the girl from Kicking It. And they just basically interviewed her for like 10 minutes. And then that was the show. So probably after that, MTV probably went to like Rob Deerdeck's Fantasy. You know, like they did the, their scheduling program. Yeah. Oh, but okay, got you. That for like those ten minutes, it was like like that that they put that show on air for like MTV or MTV Two or I'm not sure what programming. But they do record it like professionally though, right? Yeah. And then they give you like a video. They didn't give me a video. I just had video from people that I made friends with oh, okay. in the audience <laughs> because I was in the audience, so I was an audience member. They got me to perform, and then I sat back in the audience, and they I got to see the interview. Oh, but I had okay. I met a couple I made a couple friends in the line, and they took video of me, and I was like, send that to me. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I feel like that was smart what you said at the end though. Like the I booked a flight here. I'm just here for business. Oh well, I didn't, I just I booked a flight and I didn't look back. You know yeah. something short and sweet to like let people know like you know you're really about this. You know I mean I I definitely was about it. You know I I, I booked a flight to New York and you were decided ready. to perform. Yeah. So I definitely was. Uh, wanted to make the most of the opportunity and I think I think that's something that resonates with, with people as well. I think that's what I've been trying to like in the music make it as honest to my life as possible. Yeah. So like the song five AM is like, you know, something that's honest. Yeah, and I try to create something that, that you're not Yes. Like I could talk about like, you know, chains and whips and all these things. But I don't have like, you know, anything <laughs> anything luxury yeah. luxurious like that, you know, to that point where like I'm really balling. Yeah. You know, maybe I could talk about maybe like a necklace or something like that, but it's like I you know, I I definitely listen to people like nowadays that like, you know, are in the Charlotte scene or whatever scene that aren't really big time and like you know i can't really resonate with them because i'm like are you really in the club you know popping bottles like are you really about this like you? if you are then like okay good but if you're just yeah. rapping about this just to rap about it so that's why i like you know i try to keep things specific i try trying more to keep specific things to my life so but most people aren't aren't about that life i feel like a lot of them 
just lie about their life, but it's it's like well maybe because they I feel like they think that's what people want to hear because that's what they you know they hear on the radio or you know and yeah. music musically I think like they want to just you know find like the highlights and you know make everything like glamorous and they put that in the music. But I'm riding in that Maybach. It was like, yeah. <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, um, that's crazy. But I mean, man. it's like, it's nothing to be like, I mean, like, you know, some of these kids, you know, they could be like 18 and like rapping about it. But I'm like, you know, there's no shame if you're 18 and you're not riding in a Maybach. Like, that's very, you know, that's not really that, that probable, you know? They're like, boy, you dream, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dude, that's, that's, but I feel like it has a lot to do with what you listen to as well. You know, like maybe a lot of those kids listen to that type of content like of i think that's why they, uh, yeah they they can look up to like artists like that you know that are very much you know about you know that that listen to them like i like listening to Lil uzi yes, but it's sir. like i know like i can't really relate to him sometimes because you know he lives a, a vaguely different lifestyle you know vastly different lifestyle than myself yeah, yeah. but i think when like the, I, I drake is like one of my favorite artists and i feel like a lot of things that he you know raps about like not the money per se, but like the women and like the relationships and the dynamics with like the people around him, I definitely can relate to that. And that's why like, I feel like he still resonates with a lot of people, even though he's like a multimillionaire, you know, he still has a lot of people that just work regular jobs that like adore him and like want to go see him. And I think that's something as an artist, like if you do reach a level of success, you still want to be able to tap in with like, you know, something that made you like, you know, the dynamics and the, the personality that made you, you know, who you are. I think Drake is someone that does that very well. No, yeah, you're right. Because his most recent song, you were just singing it, it actually got stuck in my head. The Come and Rescue Me. Yeah. yeah, yeah He's talking me. about like make money with me. I need someone to not. Yeah. That doesn't take it away from me. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. What do you what do you think about like, you know, the how artists relate to people like you know, like some of your favorite artists, you know? Um, cause I think bad bunny is another great example of that. Um, as well. Yeah. I just think it's like making music for like the new generation of what they're going to like. Cause honestly, I feel like my music, ch music taste has changed so much Okay, just because I don't want to continue consuming. Um, like, let's say like, uh, what's that? What's that guy named that looks like Greta? Um, <laughs> And it's like Greta. Yeah, you know that environmentalist. Um, what's there's what's a, his name? Um, a, uh, oh, uh, the he's kind of weird. A, a weird nose. Uh, yeah. Dread. Dread. Ah, uh, dude, what's his name? He made a trippy red. Oh, okay. He looks like Greta and like Lil Wayne together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just saw him. <laughs> when you said Greta, I was thinking of like yeah. some like white like Amish looking. Dude. Yeah, it is like that. <laughs> but, yeah, but now, but now trippy red yeah. with Lil Wayne, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. So. I feel like my music taste is like just changing and evolving just because like what I, what I listened to at 21 has changed to like what I, I'm consuming at 25. Mm -hmm. And just also because like of my day to day, I feel like a lot of what the artists are putting out today is too damn loud. Like it's it doesn't even let me think. Okay. So maybe something like Drake, I'll listen to at the gym just to like get mad and okay. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like get some hype, you know? like feel something. Get that spite, man. Yeah, get that yeah spite exactly. So maybe, maybe like that. But I feel like music taste evolves, just like movie taste evolves, like mm -hmm. show taste evolves. So therefore, like you just have to continue evolving. Like for me, I can't really talk about sports or even like a lot of music, uh, just because it. It has evolved so much, but I do like discovering, for example, you kind of where you get your creativeness, mm -hmm. creativeness from or where you started, how you continue, like all that's interesting to me because in, in, in my life right now, it's kind of like, dang, I'm at a point where I don't have motivation sometimes. Oh, wow. So for like, that's why I'm like, I look at artists and I'm like, dude, artists are one of the have to be like. One of the toughest people in their mind to continue do, doing what they yeah. what they're doing because first you get a lot of hate <laughs> like, hey. like there's right. just like um, a lot of people out there that just like to hate like for no reason and then even it's scary too to also even stand in front in front of a crowd you never know and you never know them because yeah. you only get to know them as soon as you actually step out onto the crowd yeah. And then second, you don't ever really get recognized until you get recognized, basically. No. Like, there is no recognition of anything <laughs> you're doing 
until you're actually like recognized by on, someone yeah, major. I, yep, you're right. Like I was on MTV, but it's like it really doesn't mean anything unless like Pharrell says, "Oh man, you're on MTV." You know, it's like you get that credibility from like somebody that's established, and then people will be like, "Oh, you know, like I think it's like that that rule of seven where just your name keeps getting popped up." You know, like they hear about you from this, they hear about you from that. The rule of seven? Uh, yeah, it's like uh, it takes like seven times for someone to like you know be like in your subconscious. So like if uh, if it's an artist, if you see them on one song with somebody, and then you see them on another song, and then you see them like on somebody's Instagram, you know, just different times. Like you know, you might be like, who is this person? Like I I need to check them out just because you have been like predisposition to like you just keep seeing them. Dude, but then that's why important. That's why content marketing is super important. Because yep. if, that like, let's form. say they see you on Twitter two times, mm-hmm. they see you on Instagram two yeah. times, they see you on Facebook two yeah. times. You, you are you two once. That's already seven times. Exactly. It's like consistency is one of those things that I've seen mm-hmm. that works for like artists, works for yep. creators, and no matter what. Because like even um, if we're talking about like people that paint or that like actually oh, do okay. art yeah they don't get recognized until they're dead damn they 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 picked art you know some of these artists should have been like youtube content creators because those the content creators are, are going off you know i think that's like i look back at it now i was like damn why did i become a, an artist like i have to go in a studio and i have to write lyrics and i have to record these these youtubers just be vlogging whatever they do on a day-to-day basis they post that and like they get following i'm like dang i, I joined the wrong trap like i, I should have you know <laughs> like you said like yeah artists are not getting you know their credit until like someone was like oh man they passed and like look at their valuable art now like you yeah know? and so for that's what i'm saying like artists are just like for example you that are trying to hustle and like write yeah. still continue pull out music dude. yeah that's complete respect because um there's a, not a lot of people that like support it really because yeah. um there's just like i said there's really just no recognition until you actually like get big and and it's with yeah. everything too though yeah. it's kind of like those content creators to it it must be tiring to make so much content too so it's like anything you choose yeah. in life it's uh, still hard i think i think it's tough too like so say like i have a new song that's gonna come out mm-hmm. and I could post about it maybe like for three times. And then by the fourth time, I'm like, dang, how am I going to repackage this? Because, you know, it's already, you know, people have already seen, you know, it's like, you know, you definitely get like a little subconscious because you're unsure of like, you could just keep posting this. You know, it's like, because it's like, you're just going to, you feel like you're doing something self-absorbing or like you're oversaturating it. But if it's like, if you keep, can be consistent and you keep posting about this one song, then like somebody after like the seventh time that they finally see it on like the same platform they might be compelled to like oh well he's posted about it like six times and i've already ignored the six times let me go check it out so it definitely like you could as an artist you can definitely be i feel like a lot of artists are definitely in their own head like majority of artists can be in their own head of like i don't want to keep posting and i mean I, i can be like that as well how do you know what to like like continue with like i bet there's a lot of songs too that you just like kind of like hold yourself you back or like cringe there's, at it, there's some know? that yeah like i think definitely if i get organic feedback like through social media analytics or just like people telling me you know oh mm-hmm. i really like this song then i think that gives me the quest to pursue it more like okay this seems like a really good song a lot a lot more people are engaging with it organically let me see if i should put an advertisement behind it or just like keep putting like putting content like making content around it so i think you know definitely like i try to push every song for at least a month and then okay. past that i just have to see if i feel like i'm getting a lot of traction on the song then i'll be like, all right let me keep posting it and you use like analytics to like kind of like scan that or know what to continue doing just see like yeah the engagement like impressions mainly likes you know if people are liking it people are commenting that they like the song mm-hmm. those are good indicators to me that okay you know they You're wouldn't something right yeah yeah they, they wouldn't comment you know otherwise they might like it but like if they wouldn't comment if they don't you know at least like it so i think that's a good indicator of like okay maybe i should keep pushing a little bit more change the approach maybe make a little bit of different content towards it but yeah you know it's weird you know as an artist you know I can't really focus on just the music. I have to be a content creator as well. And a lot of, like, and even mainstream artists have to do that as well. Like, they have to come up with content, you know. For you got to come up too. with a dance. 
<laughs> a little, you know, something. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good with the dances. I, I did a song called La Cobra, and I did like a little snake to it, and I got to perform that at Tengo Talento, Mucha Talento. You did? Yeah. This is oh. in 2020. Do you speak you know Spanish? Uh, más o menos, un poquito. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know wh where are you from, if I if you don't mind me asking. Uh, my dad is from North Carolina. I guess he's he's a white American. Okay. And then my mom's from Peru. Peru. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Meet that. Yeah, you know. Just you know, Spanish roots. But you're a no sabo kid then. Ah. Uh, he's like, nah, don't do that. I grew up. I grew up. I grew up a no sabo kid. You grew up okay, but grew out. You grew up no. But how'd you start learning Spanish then? I would say. You know, uh, most of my, like, Peruvian family, like, immediate family, like, grandparents, um, aunts, uncles, like, they live here, like, from Peru, they live here in, in Charlotte and in Concord. And uh, I, I think it was just, I don't know, I felt, you know, kind of left out, you know, definitely, like, when they would speak Spanish, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know exactly what was going on, so. Like, what are y'all saying think, right now? And then when I got to UNCC, I feel like I tapped in more into my, like, Latin roots, because I ended up meeting a lot more, like, Latinos, Latinas in uncc than i did in my own high school because my own high school was like predominantly white a good like black population but not like maybe maybe i was one of like 15 hispanics in my graduating class oh, and it was like okay, 370 okay. 380 kids so you never really embraced it i guess yeah i never embraced it because i i you or he know, couldn't you i couldn't. guess i couldn't yeah and but it's also like yeah I, I didn't speak spanish which i think is like you know a really you know big you know I feel like that's what Latinos give me a, a hard time for. Oh, really? Or at least when I was growing up or like, you know, even when I didn't know Spanish, it was like, you're Hispanic, but you don't speak Spanish. Dude, I think that's it's, because only... It didn't make me want to... It, it didn't help me. It was just like, I was like, what? Damn. That's a way that we connect as like Latinos. Like, and, and over here, I think that's just a way of connection because even me, like going to speak spanish i don't know why i feel a little bit more comfortable mm. with a person or like an older person yeah <laughs> that speaks to me in spanish like i don't know why it just brings you back to your childhood yeah i don't know if it's because like my mom speaks to me that way or my dad speaks to me mm. that way but spanish is just like kind of like that connection that yeah i uh have with just yeah. about anyone that um yeah that knows it but i, I can get it that there's a lot of kids also too that I know that don't know the yeah. of Spanish. Yeah. But I'm I think I think my my case is like I'm mixed so like you know I had a white parent. These people have two two Hispanic parents. So I, <laughs> I can't I mean that's true that's true that's true. But I uh I think I I, I kind of just I think some things that didn't resonate with me well was that like I would get scolded by other people like parents or like you know older Hispanics that would be like you don't speak Spanish, you know. It's like that's how dare like you know, like it's a travesty. I'm like, dang, like I don't know. Like, oh, I get you. You know, and it's like I don't want to blame my mom either. It's just like you know, we just mainly she mainly spoke English to me in the household because my dad didn't speak Spanish as well. Uh, so we just true, spoke yes, compared English, to me and so. you. So I think you know if you know if my dad's you know is American and he spoke Spanish. And I learned at a younger age, and like, and we spoke it a little bit in the house. Like, I probably would have been like, you know, semi fluent. But now I would say I'm about like 50% fluent. You know, Duolingo. Shout out Duolingo. But it was good because I used Duolingo and then I just go practice with my family. You know, right after that. So wait, what's Duolingo? Uh, it's a language learning app. Oh really? Oh, Free, yeah, know. it's like a very like it's kind of game formatted. So it's like you pick words and yeah, it's, <laughs> really? it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you never heard of Duolingo? No. You know, I've heard about some headphones that translate. Oh, like, uh, how does that work then? I don't know, but I, I just... Like, you talk into it or you hear someone talking and they tra it translate in your ear? I yeah. think... I think you hear it and they get okay. translated to you. And then you... <laughs> yeah, one of our previous guests actually said... He said he got an Amazon for like 300 bucks. He was talking with some girl that... Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it sounds like... Yeah, 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 you already know. <laughs> so it's like, I put one in and you put one in. I say a word and then you oh, get... Oh, okay, okay. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I was about to say, because it's got to be a two-way. Because obviously, it translates, but then how do you like want to talk to that person? <laughs> all, all I grew, <laughs> like, you speak in the earphone. Like. All, I grew up, all I grew up to learning Spanish was... No, no. Oh, no. It was learning English. Because my thing, I, I, knew, I knew how to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to, how to speak English. And we grew up with Ingles, Ingles Sin Barreras. I don't know if you're so? Ingles Sin Barreras. You've never? Remember. You've probably seen a commercial. It was like... Un programa? Yeah, yeah. You would see like uh, like a skyline, was it? Yeah, veías. Era como un programa. Era como Rosetta Stone. Okay. 
El mismo. Like yeah, the... yeah, pero era inglés sin barreras, you know, like okay, the... English without barriers. Oh, <laughs> I got it. It was a little, it was a little funny. Yeah, yeah, it was like for the Spanish people, speaking people that didn't know how to speak English. So wait, you've, uh, like, what's the background like? I don't want to be that American, like, oh, were you born in Mexico? Or were you, uh, <laughs> you know. Nah, dude, I, I came here when I was three, mm-hmm. uh, but I did end up going to school mm-hmm. um, and, and just learning, like, the basics from there, which is, it's a lot easier, obviously, whenever you're, like, um, younger. Younger, yeah. And and you go in, there's ESL right there for yes. you, for little kids. Yes. I, um, if I had come any, like, older, obviously, yeah. it just becomes that much harder, yeah. but yeah, I adapted quickly. My, yeah. My saying. cousin, he was he moved uh, here from Peru when mm-hmm. he was six. So I think, like you said, like he had to. I don't think he got held back, but I think his birthday was like at the cutoff, and he had to be. But like you know, learned. a year late. Yeah, so he was like you know a little ahead of his class, like age wise. Oh, um, sure. But yeah, because I think you know, like you said, like the it takes the ESL and. Well, a lot of immigrants that come to find it. Like, did your cousin have a hard time learning? No, I think it was it was okay. It was know, okay. It was, uh, well, I mean, just because, like, I feel like there's a lot of, like, immigrants that are coming that are, like, maybe 11, 12 years old. Now, that's... that's Yeah, you're right. That's, like, another six years of, like, you know, them just knowing Spanish and, like, having to, you know, adapt to a new language and so, adopt a new language. So, it's that much harder. But you you haven't done any Spanish rap then? Uh, I've done a few songs. I did I actually did one reggaeton song uh, about, like, five years ago that I put on, like, my f- first album. Oh, for and real? I worked with, like, one of my best friends on it. We just, like... He mainly did it most of, like I would tell him the flows and like what I want to talk about, but he would like help me with some of the words. So it was like the chorus was in Spanish and like the verses were in English. So like he did the chorus and like you know had me. I just practice it and practice it, you know, to get that enunci- enunciation like you know perfecto. Otherwise, like it was not gonna sound good, you know. But I feel like a lot of artists, even though if they don't speak English, but he- they can still pull out Spanish songs and it sounds good. Yo, uh, you mean like uh? Justin Bieber and like uh, I think I think a good example of it is Drake on the Bad Bunny song Mia yeah Mia I think so too I think yeah they might not know any significance of the words but if you just keep telling them <laughs> Por qué do, dos de get it like you know yeah, they, they can yeah. get a little bit of it so yeah I think uh, Justin Bieber on um, the biggest the biggest hit like a uh, it's not bailando despacito despacito did he speak Spanish? Yeah, he was. He, he did the chorus. Like he did a verse in English, but then he sang the chorus in Spanish. There was like an original one, right? Where like it, it was just him and then the original creator of the song, Luis Fonsi, Luis Fonsi. and Daddy Yankee. Yeah. And then they did one with Justin Bieber, and that became like the worldwide hit. Oh. Okay. But with uh, Justin Bieber, he sang the chorus in Spanish, and it's like you said, like he probably practiced it enough times, or had people in the studio that were like native speakers that like were like, no, you gotta, you know, you know, in the studio you can definitely like you just. Yeah churn it out and like get it you know just right but then i saw him perform it and he would do something like despacito bamborito like he just like butchered it because oh you've seen it live no he like no i didn't see it live i just saw like a video of him like on youtube that was like justin bieber like (laughs) messes it up because he's just like probably in like in a club drunk and he's like bamborito like he just like he doesn't know what he's saying so (laughs) he probably just practiced it up to that point and then forgot about it after exactly for example what do you use for studio like for the studio or like you have like a better setup than what you did like years ago or like how do you so i actually don't go to a home studio i just have a couple friends that have like you know some good spots so trying to also like record at different studios in charlotte but okay definitely um i have a friend a good friend that uh he ends up having a studio with like a mic set up and just he's a really good engineer so Mm -hmm. i think uh you know i trust him on you know getting the the vocals and you know we work pretty well together so what matters most whenever you're in a you in, in a youtube setting in, in, a a YouTube se- <laughs> in a studio setting oh that's a good question i feel like i want to see the vibes but i feel like a like a place where an environment where i don't know is it, i don't really like have like a ton of people when i record so just somewhere where i can feel like my thoughts i can get my thoughts out and like really like if I want to shout, I can shout and like, you know, really express myself. So if I have people with me that like, I don't feel comfortable just cause like maybe I'm not that close with them, you know, I want to have people that are, I'm comfortable with that I can just like be 
like my true self. Cause well, I look at you a little funny when you're doing something that they yeah. haven't seen before. Because I feel like that's what like athletes, like I see like uh, Tom Brady talk about, you know, when he's on the field, he's playing like he might cuss, he might yell, you know, do this, you know, act out of character than him being like, you know, very professional off the field. Like, hey, how are you doing? And I think that's something that I like, you know, need like, you know, this is like my space to like be Lock my in. be like, yeah, be myself, you know. Not saying I'm not myself outside, but it's like if I want to yell, if I want to shout, like I want to like, you know, just go wild. Like that's like where I can really like, you know, have fun and like, you know, go crazy. No, yeah, because whenever you're like rapping, obviously, I think you have to put yourself like <laughs> switch a gear. Like, yeah. Like, OK, shit. Now I have to rap. Yeah. Like now I'm going to be spitting out words. Yeah, like, now definitely. I'm going to be looking stupid if, if I don't <laughs> yeah. say something right. Yeah, like definitely. I, I'm definitely not an artist that's like, you know. Uh, monotoned on like a lot of songs okay so i definitely like to have like you know my words like you know feel like you know i'm really like like i'm just like you know giving emphasis and like i don't know how to describe it but like not a mumble like yeah. the opposite of that yeah like you know it's like i'm not just like hey yo mm, mm, but it's like you know if i'm really rapping like you know like have an emphasis on the words and like you know really giving a lot of energy like i definitely like to give a lot of energy on, on my songs so it's like i definitely need to not be talking and like Hey, what's up? Like a monotone voice is like, hey, wait, well, like you know, it's, you gotta get oh, a little, okay, okay. get a little hype, you know, get a little. Yeah. Little hype. Yes, how do you, how good. do you how do you like come up the, with the words while you're like, do you freestyle a lot or do you write a lot of your lyrics? I would say for the majority, I write. Okay. If I need to, I can pull out a freestyle, but I like it in the studio. I like to be prepared because of what I'm saying in the songs. The songs are not meant to be freestyled. Because they're not about like some sort of like bullshit life that I'm living. You know, I like to craft them because I want to talk as specific to my life as possible. Mm -hmm. So I like to have them prepared before. Because I think if if I maybe try to do it on the studio on the fly and I'm paying for the studio time, then like it might just be rushed and like I might not get the best product. But if I'm talking about a song that like if I am rapping a song about like bitches and hoes and in the club, then like I could probably freestyle that and like do a good job of it, like in the amount of time there. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that I want like the lyrics to mean something and like I want that to resonate with people, then I like taking my time beforehand. So I'll normally write the lyrics. Do you choose the lyrics first and then the audio, then the then the instrumental behind it, or do you go based off Mm -hmm. what you're feeling? I would say I definitely like to listen to the instrumental and I like to craft a song around it. So okay. I think a lot of it, like my songwriting process is like, I'll hear beats mm-hmm. and I'll hear the chorus, like the, how the beat is for the chorus. And I'll just start like freestyling the chorus. Mm, like I'll just do, come and run, you know, something like that. And that way I'll find out what the song is about when I write the hook. So I'll just like mumble like the melody mm, and then I'll put work, come and rescue me. And then once I have, like, come and rescue me, then, like, I would craft a song around, like, you know, a, th- a theme. You know, i got to find... The chorus is where I'll find the theme of the song. And then once I have the theme, then I'll craft it in the verses. So uh, just imagine, like... Okay, okay. Just imagine, like, the it's like a paper. You're writing a paper, and, like, the, 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 the verses are, like, the body, where you're just really getting in, like, you know, the meat of the, of the song. Yeah. And the chorus is, like, the fluff that just kind of, you know, shows, like, the, the, synop- like the synopsis of it. You know, when you when you write like a, a summary, like the summary, you know, the course is like the summary where it's going to tell you what it what it is. And then when you get into the, the actual bodies of the, you know, the paragraphs, you know, that's where it's actually, you know, the actual like your supporting details. Exactly. And then you just go based off the song, kind of like whenever it goes high and then it stops and then. It- yeah, it's, you definitely have to adapt to the beat. You know, if there's definitely like, you know, I definitely am one of the artists that like to adapt as best as possible. Mm-hmm. So when it starts slow, then I might do like a little bit of slow flow. And then when it picks up, it's like, all right, you got to shift a little gear. I might like rap a little fast. And like a lot of my songs, I try to, you know, provide a lot of different, not a lot of different flows, but at least a few different flows. I'd say Nicki Minaj is a great example of that. She might put like four or five different like voices or flows because she's just like constantly trying to give the audience something different. So I feel like for a whole like three minute song, I cannot give you the same like tempo or the same flow. So yeah. like if my and, if and the verse the my verses might be the same tempo, mm-hmm. but then my chorus is not going to be the same. Like I can't have the same melody or the same tempo or the same flow for the whole song. Yeah, like something's got to be a little dif- differentiate. And even today, like I feel like a lot of songs have like little songs inside of them now. Before they used to not have that. Now it's like yep. 
like Tell me more. The, like rescue that's a perfect example to where like he starts off the song in a certain way and then ends it a, a different manner yeah. or, or like just every artist is doing that yeah so is the, that the, what people are looking for i think i think a lot of people now like if you could tell the beat switches yeah that so was. like like halfway the song is like a minute and a half and then all of a sudden bam Mm-hmm. The beat switch and like the song, like a diff, like a new song emerges from this song, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is this is cool. If like you know, definitely like, um, I would say probably one of the first things that that Drake know yourself. I was running through the six with my woes, and then the little dun, 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 I was running through this, and then the beat change, and then like, yeah. you know, I, I think that's. I don't know how to describe, you know, what that does for the artist, like the the viewer. Yeah. But I think the artist, I think everyone's just trying, you know, to 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 just keep doing, you know, mixing it up. You know, I think that's constantly like what's being done. Have you done that before? Yeah, actually, I was gonna I was gonna mention that I did a song. Uh, it's called "Don't Want to Talk," mm-hmm. and it's a three minute song, but I cut it into two parts. So the first part is called "Don't Want to Talk." So it's more of a hip hop song. So I'm like, and it's like a little baby Keem vibe. She don't wanna, she don't wanna talk. And that's kind of how the chorus goes. And after the minute and a half, the beat switches and it goes into like a house song. And I go, she don't wanna talk, talk, talk again. So the first part is called, she don't wanna talk. Second part, she don't wanna talk again. Mm -hmm. But I put it in two parts so people would differentiate, but it goes from like a hip-hop song into a house song. Oh, is it two different songs like just behind each other? Yeah, yeah. So like I put them like in an EP. So like you listen to the first one and then it goes straight straight Uh, into the second one. And I could could have put it into one song, but I wanted to differentiate, like just have those those two different songs. But it's still all the same project. And I think like... I That's love some, when artists do that. <laughs> and I think, like, I'm so, I, like, like we talked about, like, wanting to not be in a niche. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do, like, a house song because, like, you know, I, I definitely can catch waves of, like, me listening to the music and, like, you know, actually, like, liking house music. So it's like, I want to incorporate house music, but I just don't want to go fully into house music. So that's why I, the first part of the song that I have is a hip hop song. And then I'm like, all right, then I'll change it. And like the second part will be a house song. So that way I'm not just like, because I think that's, you know, people just are, you know, can be like, oh, what are you doing? You know, like, why are you going like, you know, so it's like, I just try to give them a little taste of like something that I like and, you know, and incorporating still like with the hip hop, like pop rap sound, yeah. but then just being able to fuse that and be like, all right, well, I'll give you just a little sample taste, you know, like, see if you like it, you know, that way they're like, oh, you're doing house now? Like, you know, what's up? Like, why, why are you, you know? <laughs> It's like, and I, th- I, I think Drake is, I, I keep mentioning Drake, but I think he's a perfect example of that because it's like, he has like his hip hop, like that's like, you know, that's his main staple, but then you'll hear him on a reggaeton song. You'll hear, he just, you know, he did the out, the house, like, you know, vibe project. He can switch it up, but because he has that foundation of people know him as a rapper, yeah. but he has the talent to go elsewhere and then still tie it into like his, his, you know, what he does best, which is like rap. In my uh, opinion. Okay, okay. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm a pop rap artist. Like I, I'm, I can rap really well mm-hmm. and I can sing a little bit. And like, you know, I started out as a rapper and so, and then I just got better along the years at singing and I was able to incorporate more singing into my songs. So now it's like, I, I, I sing the choruses, I rap the verses. And I think that's kind of like how it, how it built in because at first my singing was not that good, but I was still attempting it and still putting out music with my singing and it just got better. Like I ended up finding my voice to where that song 5am, like if I wouldn't have started singing back when I first started, then like my vocals would not sound that good or like I wouldn't find my singing voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That reminds me of when Justin Bieber tried to rap the, like the, uh, the rap phase? on the, if I was your boyfriend song. Uh, well, he he came in like whispering, and then like he was rapping, and then he started singing again. So I think it's yeah. I think a lot of artists that have been established, maybe Snoop Dogg might be good at this, but it's definitely tough whenever they are known for one thing and they just want to go completely different. Uh, and like some people can pull it off. I mean, Machine Gun Kelly, I think is a is a more recent ex- like success example where he was able to be a rapper, and then like now he's doing like pop punk. Yeah, he like uh, completely three sixty. And I think just because I think after, after kill, I went to after kill shot. He was never the same. <laughs> oh, after you like you're like Eminem got him, man. He got his ass. Yeah. So I think that's what people said. The joke is that Eminem like got him to start doing pop punk because he made he, him like, even yeah. switch. John. But yeah, he just you know, and I think it, it can work for people, but like you have to, 
like he did a 180 and i don't think he does rap music anymore maybe he still does but it's not as popular as his pop punk music because I think once he once he sw- switched that avenue, he st- he like he doubled down in it. You know, I think that's maybe that if you try to switch and then like go back, you know, yeah. it's like then it's like ah, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Are those switches different when it comes to lyrical writing? Whenever you're like singing and then rapping, or do you just elongate the words? I think with with singing, I always think of melody. So I think of like just like okay. if I can hum it, you know. Mm, and then the rapping is just like I don't know, like I always think of like like you know like a fast flow or something like that, where you're not you know I think singing like there's a there's a real differentiating like thing for singing versus rapping. That's why the writing part is different, huh? Yes, the writing part is definitely different. So like that, like I said, like when I make my songs, like I'll just have the chorus, I'll just be humming it, and then I'll put words to it, and I'll be like, bam, this is what the song is, like, and it's like you like put it in an imaginary box, like all right, the chorus is this. And then I have to get into a different gear when I'm actually like writing the verses because I'm like, that was very natural how coming up with the chorus is like, you know, very freestyle esque. Just started having fun with it. Like, all right, that's what the songs be about. Now, the verses for me, I'm like, all right, I got to craft this thing. Like, I want to make it like the best writing that they, you know, they've heard. You know, I definitely want them to, you know, be like, oh, damn, he wrote that. You know, just like really <laughs> kill it. And that's how like my songs are. But I'm someone now that I like, I like, like, I, I have this the song that's like two parter. And the second house, the second part is a house, you know, song and house vibe. And I put my vocals on it. And it's like, I definitely like that experimenting vibe. Like, like I did a reggaeton song. Like, I, I definitely like to experiment with those vibes. You ever try to make, uh, like, songs outside of your genre? Like, outside of the, like, rap, hip-hop, anything, like, way left field? Like, country? No. I think that's it. Because I, cause I feel like w- what it has to be, it has to be genuine to me. So, like, when I was listening to house music, I was going to, like, raves. And, like, you know, I, I really was listening to, like, it on my Spotify, you know. It's, like, something that, like, I can like at the time, but, like, I'm someone that has to do their due diligence. So, I have to listen to a lot of music. Cause I, because in my head, I want to be able to understand it to the point that, like, somebody that listened to house music, they, like, listen to my song, they're like, okay, like, you know. We think it's, like, it, it, it passes, like, whatever, you know. That's a good house song. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. It's like, it just can't be, it can't be like, I have to keep the quality as, as good as possible because that's something that like, I, I cannot like diminish, you know, like it has to be good. So if I decide to do a house song, I want it to be so good that people are like, damn, I like this, you mm-hmm. know, but I want to get it to that point where it has to be good because if I don't do that and it's not good, then uh, I feel like in my head, I'm like, you know, people just, you know, why, why are you doing this? You just but, trying to jack the stuff. But so yeah. do you feel like yeah. you're, you're like a perfectionist then with your songs? Yes. I am a perfectionist when it comes to songs. If I'm trying new things, I want to be able to like, like I said, have a knowledge of like how these songs go and get a vibe for it. And really feel like I'm encapsulated with that sound to be like, I want to put my two, my, cause it's all about like putting my two cents or putting my spin on it. So it's like, I want to be able to like have it like fully well. Do you think that helps you or hurts you? I think it helps me because the perfectionist part because I like I like I actually like at the end of the day like I'll be satisfied you know with my work you know sometimes as a perfectionist you can't be satisfied but I try to get it to the point where it's like I did my damn best to get this as good as possible and as quality as possible because of those people that really love that genre you know whether it be whatever genre it is I want them to listen to it and be like that was really good you know that was a good attempt you know if anything I just don't want them to be like why the fuck did you, you know, make this? Like, this, this is absolutely <laughs> terrible, you know? Yeah, so yeah. when I did a reggaeton song, like, I kept, like, practicing my Spanish at least to enunciate those words. Like, yeah, yeah, I wanted yeah. to get it as good as possible. And it might not be the best, but, like, in my head, I was like, this sounds, you know, as, as best as I can get it. Because if I... It's just like, you know, it's, it's like, wh- why are you half-assing? You know, it's like, I'm someone that's mm. like... Even when I played, like, sports, it's like, I wanted to give it my all. Yeah. Because it's like, why am I out there if I'm just going to half-ass it? So I think that's why it's like the perfectionism can be like a double edged sword. Yeah. So I think I know, I feel like I have a good judgment of like, all right, I've been working on this too. Like, you know, it's like, all right, I think I'm good where I'm at. Like the song is good where it's at, or like I'm good at practicing where I'm at that like I need to record this, you know, get it mixed, get it mastered, like put it out, you know. I try not to dwell on it because there's definitely been, you know, music where I've made like there's like something that I'm like, oh, there's that like one tiny thing that like I forgot to change and it's like, well, uh, it's out, you know, it's like and it's, but it's like, but it's like, uh, sometimes it's tough because I have to get in touch with my engineer or, you know, talk about the, you know, it's like, 
it's it just seems like a lot more steps and i'll be like you know what it's fine you know <laughs> yeah. like if i mis mispronounce a word i'm like oh, okay you know it's fine you know it's, it's okay it's kind of like whenever you write a sentence and then you figure it out whenever you read it like whenever i had to actually post it like i tend to do that to where like i forget a letter or even with our videos sometimes it's hard to like perfect everything because then there's exactly. all you you will look at it harder and not want to put it out yes and i think that's like all creatives have that like you know that they just want to put out the best possible product or you know quality that they can and sometimes it can hinder you you know it definitely can make you not, like i've definitely am someone that doesn't put out like 40 songs a year because i definitely want to the 10 five to 10 songs that i put out a year i want them to be really good you know, so that's why it's like, it's going to take me more time than me just, I could go to the studio and like do a song and like, you know, a couple like a day, you know, I, I could get something knocked out, but I know like, I like taking my time with it because I, I know it's going to be a good song. You, you want to do quality or quality? And I think like, yeah, the people that listen to me and that like my music, I think I want to have, have them get that taste every single time that it's like, we know Princeton's putting out a song. We know it's going to be good. That's why we're going to, we're going to look at it. We're going to, we're going to see it. Because, I mean, obviously, like, you can follow people that could be musicians, and it's like, you might not be excited. Like, I have people that are actually excited for my music because I, I definitely try to give them that, that quality that they're like, oh, we like this song. Because yeah. we liked the song before, and we liked the song before. And it's like, you know, just that consistency, consistency. and that quality. And I think I want to get that quantity. That, that's where it's like, you can really turn into a machine. Like, if I did this full-time, and this is my full-time job, and I was just, like, sleeping and eating at the studio... Then like that's where I could get that quantity where it's like I could get like forty songs a year and those go like you know like the Dra like like a Drake you know just like where every song's hitting. What what would it take for you to do this full time? Probably just have the not even like a crazy amount of income, but being able to just have like shows booked where I'm getting paid, and I'm actually like uh, gonna uh, sell these. Um, these are like a necklace that I designed. And this mm -hmm. is going to be like my first merchandise product. And I think if I can like sell that, I think that could just put me in the step in the right direction. And I think that's because I think nowadays like artists kind of have to be influencers to an extent, which okay. is which is because uh, it's not all about the music. You know, you have to sell yourself and your lifestyle. So that's yeah, why true. people are more tuned in, you know. It's just more it's more than the music. Yeah, so. you look at this person like, "Oh, this person looks cool. Let me go check him out what he yes. does." And that's why I like I'm like I like I like being on podcasts too, or like you know meeting other people like other creatives because it's like I, I get a step in their world like I'm I'm in y'all's world right now, and that can like help build my profile. It can give you guys content. Like at the end of the day, we're all like helping out each other, and most importantly, we're having a conversation. Dude, I love Genuinely. that about also like a lot of creatives that they're willing to like. Obviously, not all of them, some like, but most of them are willing to work with like one another, and mm -hmm. I just like that whole like. For example, here that networking group that we went to. Yes, I was like that was yeah. tough. I was like mm -hmm. that is the type of support that you, you gotta need. come in, like for sure, like to meet engineers, to meet musicians, the whole landscape. Yeah, creatives that I didn't even know. There was this one, <laughs> there was this one guy that could play like seven string guitar or something like that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, yeah. that's crazy. And so for like, even even you like stepping out in, into that zone and having that support yeah. I, i'm pretty sure you feel good because you're like oh shit like there are people going to support my art yes like it it, it feels good it it's, feels good yeah it, it feels good because you know that like uh you know you're not in it alone you know people are definitely like have the same aspirations as you because i definitely am probably one of my friends that took an unconventional route and like, you know, I went to college, I graduated from college, but like, I want to pursue something that's, you know, you know, something worthwhile, you know, and becoming like a super, superstardom artist, you know, it's like finding superstardom. So it's like definitely like seeing other people that have those aspirations, like wanting to be like, do this full time and like want to be an artist, you know, it, it's good to see because I definitely don't have that like in my inner circle. I definitely have people that support me, but like they're working like regular jobs and like, you know, they're trying to get it, you know, the very professional corporate route. Yeah. So it's good seeing those, uh, it's good like seeing people that just want to like, you know, get it just like how you're getting it, like hustling to get it. Yeah. So, yeah. and then I, I will speak on, um, learning about like the music business and like, it's good to like put out songs and be on the, be on podcasts. But I think at the end of the day, it's like, we're talking about like how I can make money. 
I figured out like, you know, I, I watched a lot of videos of like, well, that is all the initial like getting people invested in you. And then once you get people invested in you, then you <clears throat> present to them a product like merchandise. That's why merchandise is like, you know, make one of the biggest, you know, cash grabs for artists. Cause it's like you're you're redirecting you know their investment in you like their interest in you, and you're bringing into like a product like this. That's why like it took me a minute to realize, but I'm like that's why I want to have like more merchandise and like not just like a t-shirt, but like this is something that I got to design and like you know have my imprint on. It's like I want to start selling this because I think that's like if people I think I have enough fans where like I have people that like me, so it's like all right, let me put them on a product. You know? Yeah, let me show you something else outside of music. I feel like a huge example of that is Travis Scott. Uh, because yeah, a lot of his clothes is something that I buy into actually. I might not like all of his music, but his clothes is definitely something. Like... The Jordan brand. Or well, what? like sometimes he has like his own merchandise, mm -hmm. like the Travis Scott brand. I really don't know what it's called. Cactus Jack, no? Yeah, I guess the Cactus Jack. Yeah. Yeah, some of the shirts or some of the I don't know jackets or like accessories that they release. Yeah. Definitely things that I buy. Just into. the shoes I think are getting stupid. The Travis, <laughs> like the Jordan Travis Scott shoes? Dude, yeah, the all he did was on. put the Nike sign backwards. <laughs> hey, <buddy. laughs> like, it's still something, hey. though. <laughs> I mean, the stuff it's like so that, cool. I'm like, dude, that, I don't know. Okay, creative. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like all, like with AI, too, it's like you're not really, you're not reintroducing the wheel or, you know, you're not recreating it. You're not, you're just recreating things. You're not, like, introducing something new. You're just kind of spinning the wheel. And that's why I like meeting people that are actually real with themselves, because, like, ideas i i feel like just the uh, whole introduction of an idea is pretty crazy it's kind of like like where'd it come from yeah like it already exists but it's passing through your brain i feel like every idea is already here it's like einstein said past present and future are all the same already they're mm. happening all at the same time yeah you're only uh <laughs> you're you're the avenue to the idea that's all you are you're like a vessel yeah you're a vessel exactly like you're a vessel to creativity the thought coming into your brain you didn't create the thought the yep. thought already existed <laughs> so yeah, i'll get some like weird conspiracy but um i, I just like yeah. Whatever it's natural. I think, yeah, I think for the music that kind of translates as well, because it's like maybe I'm not doing something that's like, you know, it's so much different from the other person, but like how, like you said, like I'm taking those thoughts and like I'm putting it in a way that like I know if you listen to my song, it's going to like not sound the same because I'm taking influence from this person and this person. I have all these influences and they, you know, help create my own style. And then I'm putting my own two cents or my own, you know, style onto this song. So I think, because obviously, like, you know, I didn't, you know, know all, I, I had to listen to a lot of music and I had to like, you know, what do I take from this artist? Well, I you know, I definitely had a lot of influences because you definitely like, if I never listened to rap music, I could never make rap music, yeah. you know, or I never listened to this type of, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't make the music. So like you said, like, you know, with like taking it, like, you know, and just being like that vessel that just like. And that's why I like, you know, being creative because that's, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to tell my story and, you know, and hope it resonates with other people and, you know, really bring, bringing it all together. You know, I think that's what music helps me, you know, just really like is the rejuvenation of myself. Like every time I make a song, I think that's what, like, you know, it's mm. like, you know, like flex the muscles, you know. <laughs> and I, I remember talking to somebody about this, like, <clears throat> I thought that like making song after song after song would be like. Like, you put out a song, it's like, you know, that's why a lot of artists keep putting out music, you know, because it's like, you know, you don't really feel content or happy mm. necessarily. Like, it does bring you happiness to be able to create. And like, you know, that's what you get to do for a living or, you know, just being able to create, you know, as a hobby. Like, that's fun. But like, I know, like, putting out one song is like, you know, it's not going to bring me like the ultimate happiness. Like, obviously, I'm going to make another song. That's why other artists, like, they keep making songs and making songs. So like... I know that's not going to bring me, like, the true form of happiness. The true form of happiness is just being able to do it in general. Uh. So, yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, I think that's why people get, like, the mistake of, like, oh, you must be, like, so happy. Like, when I put out my first album, uh, 2017, people were like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, it, it brought happiness, you know, for, for a time, you know. But it definitely can, like, wear off because, you know, it's like time passes and it's like, you know. Something new. Something new comes along. More, more life experiences. You want to talk about some more things. And that person that you were, you know, now that, that album's like five years old, like, 
you know, you definitely want to, you know, give a new twist to it. So that's why, like, you, like I've been doing it for 10 years just because, like, want to keep making songs, want to keep getting better. And I know that's not the, that's just the grind, you know, that that's not bringing the happiness, but that's just the grind. But the happiness is in the process. It's in the journey saying. of doing it, yes. That's how you know you're doing something in your life. Yes. So it's like these these individual songs are not bringing me like the true form of happiness, but it's like being able to grind and like go through that journey is like oh you know this is oh I'm glad at the end like oh man I did that you know I'm doing that oh, I'm shit. currently doing that. Anything anything that you want to say to your fans or to the people listening to you that want to get into the music industry before we we head out? I would say probably. You know, do it for not the right reason, but do it for a reason that it's like not about like chasing something. It's about just wanting to like be your true self and like feel like this is the avenue that you can really express yourself because everyone has hobbies or, you know, things that they find. Every, every person is creative, whether they're, you know, working good, like they have some sort of like natural create. We all do. And I think it's like if you want to choose music, then just like feel like that's the avenue that speaks to you because i feel like with music for me that's what spoke to me you know like being like only child like and feeling lonely at times like music just spoke to me those artists like i felt like i was them you know like they were i related mm. to them so much that like that's why i got into music because i related to artists like kanye drake kid cuddy just because i listened to their music and it resonated with me so much that was like they live in the same <laughs> y'all live in the same life as me like that's why i you know i wanted to put my own take on it because that's i want to tell my story and that's how music, like, you know, is, is my avenue I choose yeah, to, like, yeah. tell that story. No, well, I appreciate your time, Princeton. Yeah, thank and you, guys. Thank and you for coming. And you, you want to give out your um, your username, oh, yes, where yes. we can follow you, where we can listen yes. to you. Um, you can talk right here. Well, I want to thank the brothers on La Casa Grande. Yes, it's been a fun. It is a La Casa Grande, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you can follow me on Instagram, Princeton Musica, if it were Princeton Musica. And then I also have a Spotify playlist called This Is Princeton, and it has all my songs. But I'm also on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. So if you search Princeton, drop What's the out. highest amount of plays you've ever had? I'm almost at 50,000 on a Spotify okay. song. So the song's only a minute and a half. So maybe I need to do some more minute and a half songs. But okay. almost like 49K. And oh, that'll sure. be, yeah. So I think it should be hitting 50 sometime this year. And that's, you know. Like Dude, another, I, it's just a milestone you know i wish that for yeah you. yeah i think and we talked about like i'll try to be quick but like we talked about like the happiness like it's just it's a good thing to feel like you know but i think it's like you shouldn't like rely on that to bring you happiness like if i get 50k it'll yeah. be like damn I, like that's good but then i know like it might i might feel sad and like that the 50k is not gonna bring me any you know it's like you just have to keep moving forward and be like i did that like you know i think that's you just can't get too invested in like the highs because you know you're gonna have some lows. So if, I'll try to remember that. I, 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 yeah, I feel like. Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like it's like looking at likes you get on Instagram, for example. Yes. Like you cling on to the yeah. amount of likes you got, but then sometimes you could be miserable inside. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And I think that's like I like I, I think that's what's helped me over the years. Like I was on MTV, and like I'm happy that like I got to experience that. But I know I just can't rely like uh, having that experience. Because I know that experience is not going to get me through the next few months of my life, you know, because I'm definitely going to have times of low points. So I think just like mentally, just having like that that good waiver that can just like, you know, like that unwavering, like, or wavering? Un unwavering. Unwavering, yeah. Where it's like, it's, it, you're, you're, you're good, you know, like, you know, you know exactly like that you're just going to keep moving forward. So it's like you celebrate the highs, but you don't let it be like an ego trip, you know, in your mm. mind where it's like. I am such and such person because like the a high can go straight to a low and like, you know, definitely like you want to experience those highs and lows on like success wise, but you don't want to let it affect you to the point where like you get so high that you're like so low, you can't dig yourself out of that low. So I think that's something that's really helped my, my mental is like just being able to like, that's great. I did it. I'm glad I got to like show people, tell people like, yo, I did this. Like, I'm you know, be proud of it. And then like, where mission's not done like just gotta keep it moving like just one more thing do you think your best lyrics come out at your lows yes of course that's where that's where you feel pain like that's 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 the best type of music like heartbreak for me pain for me like that's exactly like where my best mu music is because you can hear it like happy music and like it can make you feel away but you start like whenever you feel like you're going through like i went through a heartbreak 
I was just listening all those sad songs like they just like they were just like speaking to me because I would just listen to them and like you sing those lyrics like it means something else because like those people like have gone through something similar and it's like you know that like the pain really can like drive music and I think that's like you know it, it, but it's a part of life you know it's like those highs and lows so yeah that's, I appreciate that's you it. Princeton and yeah. uh, that was beautiful I, I, I hope I hope I, I hope there's a lot of success you know <laughs> that's coming for you and I just think what you said was really revealing yeah on like how it is to be an artist and like yeah. just having that unwavering uh, attitude yes. towards kind of how the whole process of music is made yeah. and I hope that anyone that's listening to it does take into consideration before actually putting themselves out there yeah you know there are lows there are highs but that's how it is for most. You just gotta be unwavered by it, and just like you know, know that you're still on your mission, and like nobody's gonna deter you from it, and yourself, you're not gonna deter yourself from it, just because like you're going through some things, like you know, you're gonna pick yourself out of that that low, yeah. and you're gonna celebrate that high, and in between, you just gotta enjoy the ride. So that's it. Yeah. Right whenever you're low. That's yeah. what I. I just, <laughs> oh, right whenever I have a break up. <laughs> Music yeah. coming from you soon. Music coming from you soon. With Princeton. With Princeton. No, <laughs> <laughs> no and I appreciate everybody that stayed till the end. Uh, check us out at La Casa Grande Podcast on YouTube, LCG Podcast on our platforms, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. So <laughs> hope to catch you on the next one. Yes, I think we got to do that. No, brr. You do it. Oh, no, you do it. You do it. <laughs> 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 on, on well <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll check you out in the next one <laughs>